So um, I'm going to talk to you about why we shouldn't ease the lockdown. Uh, to put this in perspective, it's the 7th of May today. Um, I'm from the UK and there's going to be an announcement tomorrow about lockdown easing. And I'm absolutely certain that this would be the wrong thing to do at this moment in time. And I'm going to show you the evidence. I'm going to show you the evidence based by numbers. So here are some numbers for coronavirus deaths um, uh, that um, have occurred um, uh, in uh, a number of countries, Italy, Spain, France, UK, Holland, Germany, Belgium, USA, Sweden and Canada. I've got these numbers from the Worldometer website, but there are a number of websites that you can get it from. And I've looked at this and analysed it. Now, I'm no mathematician. I've got a maths A level. Uh, but uh, that was 35 years ago when spreadsheets didn't occur and no one had a personal computer. Um, but even I can analyse this. So these are the deaths per day in all these countries. And as you can see, the graph is slightly complicated. The numbers go up and down, probably because um, deaths aren't recorded at weekends uh, uh, in the same way they are during the day because they haven't been registered. Um, I've chosen deaths over um, diagnoses because a death's a real thing, yet a diagnosis depends on whether it's um, um, a judgment or whether it's a positive test. I mean, the tests aren't that sensitive. And I think if you look at this death late, uh, data, and I'll show you why in a second, it's really clear we have to continue lockdown. Now, I realise I'm looking at this in the eyes of a healthcare professional, and I'm sorry if you feel I'm in an ivory tower and that the economy is important, but I can tell you, if we stop too early, it will affect the economy much, much more than if we keep lockdown going for another six to eight weeks. So here is the death rate per million population. And um, as you can see, it's an even more difficult um, uh, slide to look at, but at least it puts it in perspective, puts the UK in terms of numbers uh, in perspective with Italy and France. There's a lot on the news about the UK having the highest death rates. We don't have the highest death rates. We have the highest number of deaths. Our death rate is still lower uh, than Italy and Spain. Now, if you combine the death rates cumulatively, you get a sigmoid curve. And these are sigmoid curves. Uh, uh, there's a an initial exponential gain at the bottom of the curve, then there's what we call the surge, which is the straight line, and then there's the uh, closing off, which is the um, uh, uh, logarithmic bit at the end, which plateaus off. And it can be any shape. It can be a steep one like the black one or a shallow one like the blue one. And this is the cumulative deaths in uh, Italy, Spain, France, UK, Holland, Germany, Belgium, USA, Sweden and Canada. And the immediate thing that you can see is that this has not flattened off. We are still on a rising number of deaths and we're not at the end of this yet. Now, can you remember this one, the actual daily deaths? Well, you can make it look a bit cleaner by looking at it as a seven day average. So you take seven days, um, uh, uh, including the day of the statistics and average it out. And this is what it looks like. And you can see the blue line, which is Italy. It's, it's on decline, as is the orange line and the line from Belgium and Canada is still on the rise. This is just Italy and the UK. And you can see they're very, very similar curves, although the UK is about 14 to 15 days behind Italy. What you can also see is that Italy is still in the region of four to five deaths per million population. And it's going to be another month before this hits the bottom line. And of course, then they'll have to stop people traveling into the country. The same is in the UK, but about 14 days later. So the UK, it's about six weeks. It may be six to eight weeks. And if we stop this now, it's just going to go up again because there's still millions of people around carrying coronavirus who, if you put them on the London tube or into uh, hospitals, are going to give it to other people. 
So here is a line drawn on the 23rd of May. And as you can see, the deaths per million population were low then. Look how much higher it is now compared to when we started lockdown. We must not stop this too early because of all the pain we've gone through with this lockdown, I can tell you it's going to be wasted if we stop it now. So in summary, lockdown needs to continue for a further six to eight weeks.